How you doing everyone? This is Juan Romero from Switchwatch and this is my review of River City Girls. What is it about scrolling beat-em-ups that we love so much? These games for me are ingrained and formed part of my childhood. And the games that when they came out in the arcade, I was pumping in all my pocket money. And then later on as the years rolled by, I was playing them on my home console. Some of my absolute favourites were of course Streets of Rage and Final Fight Double Dragon. There are others of course, but one franchise that has stood the test of time from Japan was called Kunio Kun, or as we know it here in the West, River City series, and has been going for over 30 years. Now River City Girls is a spin-off of the River City series, a collaboration between Way Forward, who developed the game, and Arc System Works, who are publishing it and have a lot of expertise themselves in fighting games. So is this a match made in heaven? Let's find out. Now, in terms of the story, the game starts with Kyoko and Misoko, who are some tough girls currently at high school. Their boyfriends Kunio and Ricky, the main series protagonists, have been kidnapped and it's up to their ladies to save the day by taking out all manner of foes over six regions in River City. While the story is probably not what you'd play this game for, I have to say I was thoroughly impressed from the get-go with how it was voice acted throughout. Ladies, welcome to my lair. This is a rooftop. Yeah, not even a finished one. It, rooftops can be lairs. Whatever, we're looking for Kunio and Ricky. That big girl said you hang out with them, do ya? <laughs> As if. Those guys are losers. What did he say about my Ricky Pill? Chill, Kyoko. I'll chill this guy's face! Maybe a little cliche at times, but I just loved the banter, the conversations between non-playable characters, all the way to the convos between the bosses and the girls themselves. They all just chat together no matter which character you choose to play, so it really does work well if you're playing with another friend. And that's not to say you can't play the game solo, because the story is there anyway for you to enjoy. There are even some flashbacks in a comic book style, so you can see how the girls became friends in the first place, which is great to have as it adds a little bit to the backstory. One thing I love about brawlers, as they call them nowadays, is that you can pick up things to smash up enemies with. And two, I love that you can jump in this game. I'm not sure why that's so important to me, but it just is. As soon as I play a brawler where I can perform some sort of jump attack, or I can't perform it, I feel a little confined. I feel like one of my get outs when things get tough has been taken away from me. And I'm glad that in this game you can jump and perform all sorts of lovely air attacks which are super satisfying by the way. Just as satisfying as picking up a bench, smashing it against someone, or a bat of course, or that boomerang that you can either whack people with or throw it and it acts like a boomerang comes back at you on screen and then you end up knocking yourself out so be very careful. Most importantly, the engine that WayForward have built is fluid and the controls are tight, whether you're playing in handheld or with the lovely Pro Controller. At first, things are simple, but they become more complex as you get further in, adding more complex combinations, the more moves you unlock, but more on that in a second. I also love that you can scroll up and down and left and right. James just reviewed a great brawler called the Ninja Saviors Return of the Warriors. You can watch that review popping up now, top right hand corner, which only allowed left and right movement. Although still a very good game, I do prefer being able to move all around the environment. Along with beating up enemies with a range of simple moves like quick attacks and heavy attacks, this game keeps you glued because of its RPG elements. As you level up, more moves become unlocked, some which are automatically given to you and others which you'll have to purchase from the local dojo. This makes for great replayability in each of the rooms, as they're called here, in that enemies respawn after a time so you can build up your cash reserves and, of course, level up, unlocking those much-needed moves. Then you can browse the shops if you want to. You can buy those moves, food to replenish your health, and even lots of other items that you can equip for boosts, such as 5% more damage against male foes, which I found utterly hilarious. Everything in the game I found worked superbly well. There are plenty of moves to keep you hungry for more. You can explore the rooms to a certain extent in the order you want, which is nice. However, given the fact that a lot of these games will have you moving from left to right, this gives you a far 
less of a linear feel. There is a handy map with an explanation mark showing you where you need to go and when you pick up a side quest, which just gives the game a little more depth rather than just constantly beating up enemies. There's a really nice balance between talking to NPCs, beating up enemies and taking on those little quests. Playing with a friend is awesome and so is playing solo, so whichever you decide to do, you're going to play the game, you're going to be happy. The bosses themselves were surprisingly diverse and I enjoyed fighting each one. And so the enemies with a nice range of different movesets to overcome. There are Sabu statues to destroy, get them all and you will be rewarded. There are other little things to note, some enemies will beg for their lives and once beaten to a pulp, you can recruit them, bring them in to perform a move when required, even if it is only for a second or so. I didn't feel this worked that great as I'd often miss, but it's really the one of the only sort of critiques that I have. As well as hitting that Y button while beating up a foe only for you to be taken to another room because that same button activates you going from room to room so that could become a little frustrating. The other is that it can become a little bit repetitive at times but I think most of you know that playing these types of games and you're not going to mind too much here that especially when this particular game does so well to keep you entertained all the way through. Now I've not played a brawler that I've enjoyed this much for a very long time and I've played many of them in the past. It just has everything I enjoy in a game. Couple that with its fine presentation which we'll come to and you can tell I'm really excited about this review and the game itself and letting you ladies and gentlemen know how good it is. In terms of audio, the audio in this game is utterly superb. You reach some areas and think this song shouldn't work but it totally does. Take a listen to see what I mean. Now you have music like this and then there are other areas where you have those tunes that you come to expect in this type of game. I found that it was brilliant. The voice acting again between all of the characters is superb. The cast have done a fantastic job here. And then you have the sound effects which are also very cool and are all in keeping with this type of game. In terms of visuals, the visuals are also fantastic. The character's design is brilliant. There are some cameos from characters in the series, which was really nice to see. WayForward have done a really great job for this game, and they've done justice, in my opinion, and treated that source material with great respect. The areas look great too, from the school, scrapyard, shopping mall, and the highlights, which you're gonna love. The comic book style to move some of the story along is sweet too, but it's those pixel art graphics and fluid animations that really win the day for me and catch the eye. There is a stutter from time to time if you choose to run from one section to another, but it's not often and was not enough to spoil my overall enjoyment. In terms of value, the game is £26.99 or $29.99 in Euros $26.99 also. Now I often think for a game like this it can be hard to justify that sort of price tag, but not here. This is worth every single penny for this indie game everything oozes quality from the top notch visuals the music but more importantly just how good this game feels to play all the little nuances that have been added to keep you glued to the game is wonderful and even when complete you can do it all over again on your own with a friend or in hard mode there are lots of items to buy and all the statues to find also my verdict then river city girls kicks ass it's been handled so wonderfully well and the source material has been respected by way forward. What we have here is an absolute gem, one that if you love brawlers or side-scrolling beat-em-ups as I love to call them, 
then this is an absolutely essential purchase. A nine out of 10, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. And if you're still here, why not consider hitting that like button and leaving us a comment down below. I'd love to know your thoughts on this particular game. For all of you new watchers, why not consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification so we can let you know when one of our new videos goes live. We'd really appreciate that. I'd love to see you on one of our next videos. Talking of videos, if you wanna see another one, I'm gonna pop a couple up here, another few reviews, as Spyro as Final Fantasy 8 to choose a few. My name is Juan Romero from Switchwatch. Appreciate your time. I'll see you again on the next one. Take care.